everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the 2022 Nissan Frontier. Um, personally, I've been looking forward to this vehicle for a long time. The previous generation Frontier had been on sale largely unchanged since the 2005 model year. So uh, the old Frontier went on sale in like late 2004. Fast forward to late 2021 now, and yeah, that's 17 years since we've had a new Frontier. Uh, and when I say new, I should probably clarify the body in the interior, in the bed, everything that you touch, everything that you can pretty much see right here, that's new for 2022. The powertrain in this thing was released for the 2020 model year. Nissan did something kind of unique there and rolled out the next generation Frontier powertrain in the old Frontier. Uh, so for two model years, the previous generation Frontier was sold with this powertrain. And then the frame underneath this thing is still pretty much the same frame that was underneath the old Frontier. So. You've got a new body and interior here. The engine is about two years old, so it's still pretty much new. And then the frame underneath this though is still pretty much 17 years old. So it's, it's mostly new. To most people, this is new. Um, to the discerning individual though, there's, there's some nuance involved there. Um, in redesigning this thing, Nissan clearly benchmarked the Tacoma, which is frankly just strange to me given that the Tacoma is far and above the weakest option in this segment. Um, but why don't we do a tour of the new Frontier and then take it on a drive and I will get into a little bit more about my feelings on this truck. So this one's a fully loaded Pro 4X model, stickers for just over $44,000. Uh, so this is about as much as you could expect to pay for a new Frontier. Although I just noticed that this one is lacking a rear trailer hitch. So add that on and uh, sticker will climb higher. Up front here, one thing I noticed right away is uh, you've got a fake skid plate until you get down to this point right here, at which point that is a metal skid plate. I assume it's aluminum, but skid plate is a uh, fake which is surprising on a vehicle like this it's generally meant to be a tool surprised they chose that anyway uh this is a pro 4x model the nissan has clearly adopted this orange color as like the pro 4x brand color so the new nissan logo that is the new nissan logo it's slightly updated um includes this orange color and then these recovery points here are also orange and that's a pretty robust recovery point that is bolted right into the frame uh so yeah nothing fake about that Moving around to the wheels, and these are 17 inch wheels. Something noteworthy, uh, the Tacoma TRD Off-Road uses 16 inch wheels. Nothing better or worse about either of those there. Just uh, kind of surprised that Nissan went with 17s. But again, not a big deal. Uh, these do feature a fake beadlock ring, which is kind of weird. I don't like things that are made to look like other things. Just give me a regular wheel or give me a real beadlock. Don't give me something that looks like it's something else. Anyway though, uh, alloy wheels wrapped in Hankook Dynapro AT2 all-terrain tires. They are 265-70 R17. Moving down the side, my test vehicle does not have running boards, which I don't mind at all on an off-road trim level. Those generally just get in the way off-road anyway. Here's the Pro 4X sticker. Moving around to the tailgate and you'll see that Frontier the Frontier word mark is stamped in the tailgate. And then there's another Pro 4X badge right here. It's an actual badge, not a sticker. Uh, tailgate itself is nicely damped. As far as I know, the tailgate on the previous gen Frontier was not damped, so there's an improvement. And then it's even damped pretty nicely on the way up here. One other thing about the tailgate is this warning label here telling you not to fill up fuel cans in the bed of the truck. It uses an old hard body Frontier as the example truck there. So I thought that's really fun. As for the bed itself, uh, it is steel. And that's another way in which this deviates from the Toyota Tacoma. Uh, the Tacoma uses a composite like plastic bed. It's, it's durable, but it is a plastic composite as opposed to the steel bed that's offered by just about everything else in the midsize truck segment. Uh, the Hunter Ridgeline uses a kind of composite bed as well. Uh, you get tie down points. So there's one here. Back there, there, and there, so there are four of them. Then there's an AC outlet right here, 120 volt, three prong. So if you're going camping and you wanna plug in a refrigerator or uh, charge up some devices, that's a nice thing to have. And then one more thing back here is this deck rail system. It consists of three rails here. So one, two, three, and then four movable tie down points. So you loosen these. 
Then you can move them back and then tighten them. Tacoma offers something very similar. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same exact part, but uh, there's a rail here and then against the back of the bed too. So you're able to add a tie down point to the back of the bed, which might come in handy. I just mentioned that there's no uh, receiver hitch on this, which is surprising, but you could get this with the receiver and then I would think that a seven pin and four pin connector would go right here. Underneath, you can see those Bilstein shock absorbers, uh, just regular old Bilsteins, very similar to what's on the Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road. And then the spare tire is matching, the rim is not. So it looks like, yeah, just a regular old rotary style steel wheel there. We'll climb inside. So this is a pre-production example. So I don't have a real window sticker, but I do have this kind of information sheet here. So 2022 Frontier Pro 4X pre-production, although you can expect that a production version is gonna be exactly the same as this. As equipped, this one comes in at $44,315, fully loaded. 3.8 liter V6 engine makes 310 horsepower and 281 pounds-feet of torque. And that is mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. So this one's a Pro 4X trim, and it also has the Tech Package and the Pro Premium Package. Tech Package gets you things like lane departure warning, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, rear sonar system, rear automatic braking, high beam assist, intelligent cruise control, and traffic sign recognition. The one thing this truck lacks, though, is lane keep assist. I know the Ford Ranger offers it. The reason this doesn't have it is because it still uses the old hydraulic steering system, from the Frontier that came out in 2005. So uh, a little bit surprising to see that Nissan had 17 years to design a new truck and uh, they didn't even bother to give it lane keep assist. That's kind of the theme here. Anyway, though, moving on, the premium package gets you fender audio, leather seats, an auto dimming mirror, premium door trim, 17 inch dark beadlock style alloy wheels. It's crazy to me that they even include that word there. Anyway, that brings the price to $44,315. So if Nissan was benchmarking the Tacoma when they designed the new Frontier, uh, I think they've come out ahead, at least when it comes to the interior. The Tacoma has a really weird seating position that sees you kind of sit with your legs out in front of you. Uh, that's not the case in the Frontier. This is kind of how you sit in most vehicles. It's comfortable, it's familiar, it's normal. So the Frontier gets a win there. Over on the door panel, things are okay. Uh, switch gear is about what you'd expect in a mid-sized truck. And none of these mid-sized truck manufacturers give you any more than they absolutely have to. So uh, yeah, switch gear, pretty basic. Doesn't feel bad, doesn't feel good. What's frustrating though, is that only one of these windows is uh, one touch up and down. Strangely, there is a press photo that shows this window being one touch up and down as well. But uh, in the actual vehicle here, it appears that only the driver's window is one touch up and down. These door pulls feel like they're yanked right out of a Sentra. Um, they're not really truck-like at all. In fact, they're very sedan-like, but ergonomics are okay. Usability is fine, just uh, aesthetically, they don't really match the rest of the truck. Traditional gauge cluster here, you'll recognize this from every other modern Nissan product. So speedometer, tachometer are mechanical. And then there's a decent sized screen in the middle there that gives you a lot of information. Infotainment system is, uh, that's modern Nissan. It's the same one that's in the Titan. Easy enough to use, maybe not the best, maybe not the best looking, maybe not the most modern, but um, not terrible. Uh, moving down, I imagine a lot of this is pulled from the Titan as well. So HVAC controls, here's a 12 volt outlet. And then here are your four wheel drive controls. I'm willing to bet these are the exact same uh, transfer case controls that were in the old Frontier. We'll go and flip into two wheel drive. Uh, four high, you can shift into on the fly. And then for four low, you push and they go down. Uh, you have to be in neutral to go into four low. That's, that's how transfer cases work. That's nothing that's unique to the Frontier here. Steering wheel is the uh, same steering wheel that's in the Titan. Over to the left here, you've got some off-road features. And given that things like hill descent control and a locking rear differential are oftentimes selling points of these off-road oriented mid-size trucks, I'm really surprised that Nissan hid all this stuff uh, to the left of the steering wheel here. So here's your hill descent control button. And then the rear locker is all the way down there. And the Tacoma 
the button for the rear locker is up here, which is fun. I'll admit it's fun to have something up here, kind of like you're in an airplane or a fighter jet. Uh, on the frontier though, it's, it's hidden all the way down here. Here's a button to turn off the stability controller. Here's a button for the cargo lamp. This turns off the active safety features. And then this turns on or off the 120 volt uh, AC outlet in the bed. Truck does have a tow haul mode, uh, which is nice. There's no tow haul mode in the Tacoma. Over here, heated seats, heated steering wheel, turn the parking sensors on and off. Then there's a USB-C port and a USB-A port. It's nice to see Nissan including USB-C. This is just a storage area. Here's the control for the nine speed automatic transmission. There's no sport mode I'm noticing, which is surprising, but you do have a manual shift mode. So there's up and down cup holders. Uh, they're spacious. I have a little cup that I use for my coffee that doesn't often fit in the cup holders and vehicles, but it does fit right here. So that tells you that these cup holders are a little bit bigger than most cup holders. And then here's a wireless charging pad. It's big. It's quite big. There's how my phone fits. You kind of have to fiddle with your phone a little bit to get it to seat on there. So like there, it doesn't work if it's down there. Does, does, doesn't, kind of doesn't really work if it's down there. You have to put it right in the middle. So I guess that's kind of a trade-off, right? It fits bigger phones. It's just with smaller phones, you really have to get them just right. One thing that kind of bugs me about this interior is these grab handles right here. They... They're meant to look chunky and robust, right? And if you're gonna make something that looks chunky and robust, you'd better make sure that it's actually chunky and robust. And these just aren't. They don't feel really nice to grab. There's a plastic seam on the underside here. And then when you do grab onto them, they move a lot. They move way too much. Um, kind of disappointing. Let's hop in the back seat. So here we are on the Frontier's second row. This back seat is very upright. Um, wouldn't be super comfortable on a long trip, but I could probably tolerate it. Uh, I've been in the back seat of a Tacoma. I honestly can't tell you if this is worse than that. With most of these mid-sized trucks, the back seat's kind of an afterthought, even if you go for the crew cab model. Um, but all I'm saying right now is that, yeah, this seat back is very upright. There is a fold down armrest with a cup holder and then a USB-C port and a USB-A port. Oh, and another 120 volt three prong AC inverter back here. So thumbs up to that. There are seat back pockets on both of the seat backs and then door pull windows. Not one touch up or down, which is again, disappointing. Grab handle, grab handle there light overhead there we go oh that uh, apparently doesn't work is it going to stay on now hmm well nissan would say well it is a pre-production after all but uh yeah i hope that would be fixed on production units one more thing, there's a sunroof up here. It's a normal size sunroof, no panoramic. Uh, that's not something you can get in this segment. Okay, now let's go for a drive. Oh, before we climb inside here, let's take a look at this sticker. Uh, this is on every vehicle. It's especially relevant on trucks and utility vehicles. It says, the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed 1,020 pounds. Uh, this is gonna come up when I talk about my frustration with the new Frontier. Okay, driving a new Nissan Frontier after 17 years. So given that this is the Pro 4X model, the suspension's a little squishier. Going over things like manhole covers and undulations in the road, uh, it certainly feels like an off-road suspension. I think if you were to take this off-road somewhere like Moab or in the mountains somewhere, uh, you'd find that the suspension does make a difference. There's 50 miles per hour, so not exactly quick. Uh, you're not looking for trucks in this segment to be fast. Um, 
still, I feel like it could be a little quicker. Uh, the Ranger, which uses a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder, that definitely felt quicker than this. So while this truck's certainly not gonna win any awards for handling, it's kind of fun to bomb around corners in it, given that it's got that off-road suspension and that it's rear wheel drive. Same can really be said for most mid-sized trucks though. They are generally fun to drive. The Frontier here, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily more fun than any of the competitors though. All right, coming up on our first speed bump here and we're going 20 miles per hour. Yeah, felt pretty good, but again, off-road suspension. Second speed bump, we'll go 30. Yeah, it felt fine. It kind of pulled down, felt like, as the rear end went over this speed bump. It was a little strange. Let's go 30 again over this one. Yeah, it felt fine. Like I said, this still uses a hydraulic steering system, uh, which is what was used in the old Frontier that came out for the 2005 model year. So it's, it's an older system, uh, but I think it's probably still somewhat similar to the systems used in other trucks. The backup camera is the worst backup camera I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, Nissan has done it. They've offered a worse backup camera than Toyota. Like it's, it's terrible. This backup camera, boy, like the backup camera in my 2008 Land Cruiser is better than this backup camera. It's atrocious. The truck does have a 360 degree top-down camera system. I know there's an off-road component to that, but right now I'm just using it to back into my driveway. These systems are nice because they allow you to back into parking spots perfectly because you can see the lines on either side of you from above as you back in. So that definitely gives a little thumbs up to the Frontier here, although I'm pretty sure the Tacoma has that as well now. All right, and that is your look at the new 2022 Nissan Frontier. Um, I think in the intro, I alluded to the fact that this truck frustrates me a little bit. Um, and I'll get into that by saying this, there are kind of two different ways to review a vehicle. You can review it in a vacuum and say whether or not it's objectively bad or objectively okay. And I think the Frontier here is objectively okay. I think if you were to go out and buy one of these, you'd be content. If you like the way it looked and you're like, I want to go look at the new Frontier and uh, I need a truck, so maybe I'll buy it. And then you were to buy it. I, I think you'd be fine. Um, it offers comfortable seats. That's one thing I haven't yet mentioned. These seats are really comfortable. Um, the driving position is fine. The infotainment system is modern enough. Um, it's about what you'd expect. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Uh, you get a lot of active safety features. But like I mentioned, though, no lane keep assist, which you'd expect in 2022 and an all new vehicle in 2022. And that kind of brings me to the other side of reviewing a vehicle. As a journalist, um, I want to help people make good decisions. I want to help people make the best decisions when it comes to buying a new car. It's a huge expense. It's often the most a person will spend in their life after buying a home. Um, and in doing that, I look at vehicles relative to the alternative. So in this case, I'm viewing the new Frontier relative to the Toyota Tacoma, relative to the Chevrolet Colorado, relative to the Ford Ranger, relative to the Honda Ridgeline, relative to the Jeep Gladiator. And when you look at it relative to the competition, Nissan had 17 years to design a new midsize truck in this is all they're giving us. Um, the truck doesn't use a new frame. It uses an engine that's fine, but pretty unremarkable. Um, payload on this truck is weak, to put it plainly. Uh, I mentioned before, 1,020 pounds. It's better than the Tacoma, which is atrociously low at 950 pounds when similarly equipped in its crew cab TRD off-road trim. Uh, but when you look at the Chevy Colorado, when you look at the Ford Ranger, this thing gives up over 400 pounds of payload capacity. And I have taken a Ford Ranger on a camping trip where we would have overloaded a Tacoma. We would have overloaded the new Frontier here. Um, it was a trip that involved me, three friends, our bikes, and our camping gear. And um, yeah, technically the Tacoma and the Frontier here would have been uh, overweight. So what I'm getting at is 
this truck feels very low effort. Um, Nissan doesn't have any proprietary off-road tech. The truck doesn't do anything new. Uh, fuel economy, at least according to the EPA, is two or three MPG shy of the Ranger. And Nissan had 17 years to design this thing. There's not even any interesting features in the bed. I mean, there's really nothing new here. So for a company to have 17 years, that rounds up to two decades to design a new mid-sized truck and then put out this, which does, it's not bad, but it does nothing new. It introduces no new features. It's immediately at the bottom of the segment. It's better than the Tacoma, but it's still toward the bottom of the segment. It's not better than anything else in the midsize truck space. Um, I'd still put the Ford Ranger far and above at the top of this segment. Chevrolet Colorado, it lacks some modern active safety features and GM doesn't really have any proprietary off-road systems either, but it at least does truck things like it tows and it hauls. Um, Ridgeline and the Gladiator are kind of unique in their own special ways. So it's hard to gauge those against the rest of the segment. But from there, you've got the Frontier here and then the Tacoma at the bottom of the segment. Uh, the only case in which I'd ever recommend buying a Tacoma is if you want a manual transmission, uh, aside from the Gladiator, which again is kind of a unique thing. Uh, Tacoma is the only vehicle in this mainstream mid-size truck segment that offers a uh, manual transmission. Um, but it's really strange to me that a company had this much time and then this is this is what they put out. Uh, it tells me that Nissan is content to occupy the bottom of the segment. Um, huge company like that, if they wanted to, they could have engineered something better than this. And in fact, the Navara, Nissan's mid-sized truck that they sell in foreign markets like Australia and the Middle East, that offers a payload of over 2,000 pounds. So you can't tell me that with all the active safety features and the crumple zones and the special US regulation stuff that adds weight, you can't tell me that Nissan isn't capable of building a mid-sized truck that would meet US regulations and still offer a payload on par with the Ranger, a payload of over 1,400 pounds. Um, the company is clearly capable of doing that, but for whatever reason, they don't. Um, they've designed and sold a vehicle now in the United States that to me feels neutered. It feels subpar. And frankly, after 17 years of waiting for a new frontier, um, I feel a little bit insulted here. So uh, that's my take on the new Nissan Frontier. Um, sorry. Thanks for watching.